Welcome to Speaking on the Inner and Outer Game. So we are so excited. We've got three amazing presentations for you today to enjoy. So we've got Tina Greenbaum, Elizabeth Bachman, and myself, Tanya Hoffman. And you, oh my gosh, you're so lucky to be in the amazing presence of these incredible women. And the first one up, Tina Greenbaum is one of those people that you're like, she is not only someone incredibly special, but someone that can really help me get out of my own way. So without further ado, Tina, why don't you take it from here? All right, thank you, Tanya. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the inner game and the outer game and how we might all put it together. So my specialty is the inner game. What do we talk about when we think of the inner game? It's kind of what goes on between your ears. In order to present a speech, there's a whole bunch of things that happen. And I know many of you are very familiar with this process. So we have the logistics, putting the thing together. We have the marketing. We have you know, writing the speech. We have all these different pieces. But how much time do you actually spend on what goes on between the ears? So I'm going to give you three tips, things that I've used in my career and that I teach people and I think will help you gain that sense of confidence because it's confidence that frequently keeps us from being all that we can be. Even if we get out there, sometimes we're just not all of what we have to offer. So I want to give you three things. Number one, practice. What does practice do for us? For one thing, it helps us to learn not only what it is that we're gonna present, but it helps us to learn how we think. Some of us are visual, some of us are auditory, some of us are kinesthetic. It's very important for you to know your own personal style. I know when I practice, and I put something in front of me, sometimes my bullet points that I want to remember. If I close my eyes, I can visualize them. I can see them. If I practice it enough, what happens is the left side of the brain will quiet down. All that chatter, oh, am I going to remember? And what's going to happen? And what if they don't like me? And blah, 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 blah. blah. All that chatter begins to quiet down the right side of the brain begins to open up where our creativity is and where our muscle memory is and where that speech is. So once you practice enough times over and over and over again, even if you get stuck, rather than thinking, oh my God, I can't remember anything, you could just take a pause. You can invite that sort of videotape to show up. And I promise you that it will. Once you practice and how to be relaxed, and that's the whole other part of it, and getting your nervous system quiet. But if you practice enough, that speech will be there for you. Number two, let's see, visualization. Okay, I, I kind of alluded to, to a little bit about how I might use it if I can't remember something, and this is how I got through all through school. I could see the, the words on the paper. But if you spend some time, and I do this every single time before I speak, I did it this morning, just before I got on here. I sit for a moment and I think about what do I want to create? What's the sense that I want? What does my body feel like? Where's my energy? And so if I take that time, I remember I was talking to a group of moms under the age of six, who had children under the age of six. And that, that's an experience that I've had in my life. So I sat and I, I kind of brought back those memories and I got into the feeling and I got into the sensations of the struggles of what these women were dealing with on a daily basis. So I, I, I tuned into my audience and then I tuned into what do I want to create? What's the sense? What's the sense of safety? How do I want to move my body? A lot of the things that Elizabeth may be talking about but I watch it, I make a movie, and I visualize it ahead of time. So that's number two. Number three, which is a really, really, really important one, is to be aware of your energy. When we get nervous, and when we get agitated, 
where do you think the energy goes? Well, I can tell you, it goes up out of our head and into space and somehow we are disconnected from ourselves. So if we wanna give a really good speech and we want it to come from our heart, we have to connect to it. So what we wanna do, again, this is some of the pre kind of things that you wanna do before you speak, but also when you're speaking and if you get distracted and you lose your focus, you wanna come back and you wanna ground yourself. What do I mean by that? Many of you may know what that means, but I wanna be aware of where my energy is. And one of the easiest ways to do it is find your feet. Just find your feet. And once you do that and you can extend your energy all the way down into the earth, and again, it'll start to bring that material that you have memorized, or not really memorized, but that, you've, that you know and that you've practiced and you're familiar with, it's gonna bring it back to you. So when I'm talking, there's a whole bunch of things in the mental game and, and practice and ways to calm your nervous system and how to relax and so on. But these three things, number one, practice your speech. Practice it over and over and over again. Know your beginning really well. Know your ending really well. They, we kind of call it the bookends so that you have an anchor and you're not kind of floating it out, of, out there. Some of us are really good kind of flying by the seat of our pants. I'm pretty good at it, but it's a lousy thing to do when you want to make a really good presentation. So practice. Get that stuff in your nervous system so that you can count on it and it's with you. It's like your best friend. Number two, use the power of visualization. When you visualize, make it very, very vivid. Feel what it feels like. See the colors, see your audience, see the room. How big is it? See, you, see yourself on stage. And you know that if you do this, your nervous system is already set up for success. This is what great athletes do and great performers. They do a lot of visualization before an event. So you're gonna visualize. And number three is you're gonna ground yourself. If your energy, if you feel kind of spacey and you're disconnected, pause, smile, take a moment, find your feet, and just go again. So those are three, three tips, things that I use all the time that have really helped me in my career and help me feel confident as a speaker and what's more fun than being confident because then you can really enjoy your audience so what i want to present to you today is kind of a, a funny uh way of helping you and then helping you even more so i have a program that i'm connected with it's called thrivecourses.com and on it are courses, modules by many different great business coaches, speaker coaches, personal growth coaches, people that are just kind of very experienced. And you can buy this as a package for this absolutely ridiculous price of $7 a month. And this is a price for life. You are, this is a launch. So you're just at the very beginning. My modules, my course called Mastery Under Pressure, which is a 12 module course, is on that course list. So not only am I offering you the, for $7 a month, it's $84 for the year, you'll get my course in there, but you will also get an invitation. I'm doing a two day workshop on May 6th and 7th in Emeryville, California, right outside of San Francisco. And you're invited to come to my workshop for free and to bring a guest. So this is a super duper duper Thing where you will learn so much and have so much opportunity. And I hope that you will join me. I so look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, Tanya. Perfect. All right. Well, gosh, you better take care of advantage of all that. I mean, hello. I can't wait. Oh, okay. So now we're so excited. Let me unmute her. So Miss Elizabeth Bachman. So we went from the inner and now we're going to go to the outer because if you don't know just some of the base information on your stage presence, on the way that you appear to people, then you're gonna be losing opportunities that you could have. So Elizabeth's gonna give you some incredible information that you're gonna strap yourself into. So Elizabeth Bachman, take it from here. 
Thank you so much, Tanya and Tina. I just love working with this. I'm so excited to be on this call with the two of you because the way the three of us all help speakers, it all fits together. And this is really a super powerful group. So I'm Elizabeth Bachman. I'm an international opera director as well as a presentation skills trainer. And that matters because I've spent over 30 years working with the greats, people like Luciano Pavarotti and Placido Domingo and so forth, helping them be better on stage, as well as helping speakers, presenters of all kinds. And what I've discovered are there are three big presenting mistakes that so many people make that actually cost you sales. And really the whole point of speaking in public is to move people to take action, whether it's to buy your product or your service, or whether it's motivating your team to do what you want them to do, or whether it's talking about an idea and something that's really important to you, maybe it's for a nonprofit and you want them to donate. These three mistakes are the things that I see over and over again, and it breaks my heart because I see speakers who are giving their all on stage and then not getting the results they need. And I've really pledged myself and pledged my life to helping with that. So the third biggest mistake is not being relevant enough. That is that your audience doesn't think that what you're talking about might be relevant. And the answer to that, I recommend that you write this down. The answer to that is match your message to the room. I'll say that again, match your message to the room. Remember that in order to get people to take an action that you want them to take, you need to give them what they're looking for. Now, I've heard lots of speakers say, yeah, 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 but they come to me looking for something, and, but what they really need is something else. And what I urge you to do is give them what they want to get them in the door, to get them to work with you or take the action you want them to take. And then you can give them what they need. That way, speaking engagements can be incredibly lucrative and they can be a huge waste of time. So it's important to match your message to the room. The second big mistake is too much how, not enough why. And I know, and I can see people nodding here. It's because we all know this, it's sales 101. You want to talk about the benefits rather than the process. And yet, for those of you who are listening, I am guessing that you are all experts in what you do. And as an expert, it's really easy to fall into the trap of talking about what you do and how you do it and not why it matters to the audience. Once again, why is it relevant? This is also part of matching your message to the room. So remember, talk about the why and why they need it. Indeed, your job as a speaker, a speaker who is trying to get results, is not to teach them how to do what you want them to do. Your job is to give them the hope that they can solve their problem through working with you or through investing in themselves through you. So actually that means that as speakers, we're, we're figures of hope, which I love. I love that idea that we are here spreading hope that there's an answer to the problem. You have to show people how that's possible but you don't have to show them exactly how to get there. And the third biggest mistake is being either bland or pushy. I just think for a minute, have you ever seen a bland and boring speaker? Have you ever seen a pushy speaker? Has anybody ever been that bland or pushy speaker? Uh, I, I've had my moments, I have to say. I see laughter from the other two. The thing to remember, and you can write this one down too, is that sales is like sex. Nothing happens till somebody gets excited. The reason why this matters is that only 7% of what people perceive about you comes from your words. 
The other 93% is how you deliver them, who you are in the room. This matters if you're doing an internal presentation, if you're presenting to a group, it matters in, in job interviews, it matters in pitches for funding, all of this. 93% of what people perceive about you is going to be how you deliver your, how you deliver the material, not so much the material itself. And I love this part because I, that's what I've spent the last 30 years doing is teaching people how to deliver great material and to get the action and get the result that they want. So remember, match your message to the room, don't do too much how, concentrate on the why, and be sure that you have somebody help you with your delivery. Because as a speaker, you can't see yourself speaking. You've got to have someone who's got informed, educated eye to give you the right feedback. Now, for those of you who'd like to learn a little bit more about this, uh, I'm called the Star Maker for Speakers. And you can get my free gift. It's a series of short, useful tips that come by email every week or so. It's called the Star Maker Secrets for Speakers. It's my gift to my fellow speakers from my 30 plus year of training presenters. And you can find it at starmakerforspeakers.com forward slash free gift. That's star maker, the word for, F-O-R, speakers, plural, dot com, forward slash, free gift. And now I am super excited to introduce the amazing Tonya Hoffman, because we've got the inner game from Tina. We've got the outer game from, a little bit of the outer game from me. Tonya's going to show us how you do this in business and how you can actually make a life as a professional speaker. So Tanya, take it away. Thank you, yay, I'm so excited to be here and give y'all some insight. And you know, a lot of what we do as business owners, as coaches, as speakers, as fill in the blank, is really showing people what's inside of our head so that they can experience and do whatever we're excited about them doing, right? And what people have a hard time with is they get stuck with, I need to be like Tina. I need to be like Elizabeth. I need to be like Tanya instead of being like you. So what I wanna to talk to today about is the branding of you your uniqueness, your part about you that makes people drool to get to know you. They're just craving to know who you are because you stand out. Now, I get how uncomfortable it is to stand out. And when we start looking at developing this whole variety of what do we do on social media? What do we do on a website? What do we do in front of people on stage? What do we do on a webinar? When it all comes down to it, there's two things that matter. How do you make people feel when they're around you, they hear from you, they see you, they go to your website, right? The feelings that they, that's provoked. And then does that resonate with the people that you're actually trying to target? Because a lot of times we get surrounded by people, we keep gravitating people to us that are really not our ideal clients and we don't know why. And it's usually because of us, because of ourselves. The way that we're projecting is drawing those people in. So when you start looking at your personality and the way that your website looks and the way you're presenting yourself on stage, is it cohesive? Is there a message that attracts your right target market? So let's take for example. So used to, I used to be an incredible introvert and I know people have a hard time believing that. So I always have to show you the picture. This is me, 2005 the Leander Chamber of Commerce, 
holiday gala, ladies. This is what I wore for the gala. Now I show this because a hey, hello. Um, thank goodness I had a hair change, but back then I thought I had to be professional and quiet and I got to, you know, fit in. And the more that I did that, the more I fit in and I was invisible. So as soon as I started pushing myself out there and said, okay, who is Tanya? And then I emphasized who Tanya is on the colors, the emotions, the words, everything. Now people are actually drawn to me. Back then people were drawn that were negative and I don't have money because that's the way I thought. I was negative. I didn't have any money. <laughs> and because of that, that's who you know, wanted to be around me because people gravitate to people that are like them. So I started going, okay, in 2007, I made my first rule. You have to be nice. I was like, whoa, all right, let's push all those negative people away. All right, no more negative ninnies, meaners, nothing like that, right? No grumpiness allowed. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I got people that were around me that were smiling and that were happy. So what is your rule? Really, what is your rule? You, you can make up your own rules, right? The next rule that I have is you have to be not perfect. Why? Because I was really tired of people expecting me to, you know, have everything in my email spelled correctly. <laughs> and I'm like, I have a speech impediment for one thing. So trying to write and to coordinate all that doesn't always work out. And it really wasn't my personality anyways. It didn't really matter to me, even though I have an English major, all right? So it doesn't really matter because to me, it's all about communication. So what are you communicating? So I want you to go and really think about what is your core values? And then I want you to tell people that. I want you to make two rules and I want you to tell the world. I want you to tell social media. I want you to put it on your website. I want you to own those two rules right? And it could be that you're wanting people that are serious about business. Maybe you want people that are incredibly professional. Maybe you want very elitist. Maybe you want down to earth, right? Look at the, you know, the guys on there with the big beards, uh, Duck Dynasty people, right? So they own that look. They own that brand because that's who they're trying to draw in. It's people who resonate with that. So just own whatever kind of crazy type of person you are, just own it and then emphasize it and then continue to emphasize it and you will own your amazingness. All righty. So I want to invite you to, if you have trouble, it's like, I wish I just had someone to talk to about this. I would love for you to enter my contest. So I do a contest every month so no matter when you're listening to this, go ahead and jump in on it. Go to my website, Tanya Hoffman. Remember, it's Tanya's with an O, so T-O-N-Y-A, and then Hoffman. All right, my husband's family does not know how to spell it right, so you have to get it right. It's one F and two N, so H-O-F, like Frank, one. So H-O-F-M-A-N-N, -N, so Nancy Nancy, dot com. Tanya Hoffman dot com forward slash win w-i-n win right so tanyahoffman.com forward slash win and then let me go over again real quick so to get tina's great information and make sure you get all of her amazing things like i'm gonna go do right away it's thrive courses with an s at the end dot com forward slash start forward slash 19 okay and then to get elizabeth you want to go to star maker for f o r speakers with an s dot com forward slash free gift free gift all together all righty let me bring on these lovely ladies and so thank you ladies for being on i hope everyone enjoyed today i know i did i did too oh, this was great yeah thank you and i'm so excited to hear about these these things I, i've been waiting for tina to offer her modules for a while. I know so many people who've taken Tina's courses and just blossomed. And I really love what you were saying also, Tanya. It reminds me of a client I had who was convinced that she really had to be serious in business because what she's doing, and she was convinced that she wasn't allowed to be funny. 
And I worked on her, it took a while, but she was making speeches. <clears throat> and I said, you're funny. If you allow yourself to be funny, I promise you'll have better results. And now she's letting her own humor, she's being herself. Yeah. She's letting her own humor coming in. And now the sales are coming in. So I really love what you both said. It's so germane to what we do. Awesome. And I'll, I'll put in my two cents because I have my pencil and paper I was writing down from both of you when you said, write this down. And I did. And so this is really valuable information. This is beyond just a little chit chat kind of um, conversation. You know, each one of you, and, and I certainly have plenty of experience. Uh, we have so much to offer and we're so delighted to be able to offer it. And one of the things that I didn't say is that I do sell that program that I'm offering on that thing for a thousand dollars. So go for it, babe, <laughs> go grab it. And um, it would be my pleasure to have you. That's awesome. So